overly mysterious artists. All right, so over the past couple of years, I've noticed this sort of influx of artists overplaying this persona of being nonchalant and overly mysterious to their fans. To the point where I think their fans are starting to catch on and truthfully are getting a little bit sick of it, I'm not gonna lie. I was at Wireless the other day and every single artist I swear to you was late to their set. Starting right from 3.30 when Destroy Lonely was supposed to come on. The icing on the cake being that the king, the true king of the IDJAF wars himself, Playboy Carti came out pretty much an hour late to his set fam. I was there, <laughs> I was there fighting for my life in that crowd the entire day. And I just remember staring at the ground, just trying to recharge my batteries and just hearing the choir of 50,000 boos. And I look up at the screen, this nigga is gonna be late. Curfew is 10.30. Back to the point. Let me be clear, this isn't just a US based thing. I've also noticed it around UK artists or just UK people in general, the whole nonchalant thing. It's like they heard that word and just decided to make it their entire personality. It's insane. In fact, some of these artists don't even have the audience to even make benefit from this whole nonchalant persona because half of them don't even act like that in real life if we're being real. All of this begs the following questions. Why is this the case? Does it even pose any benefit to them? And what can we as fans do about it? I go by ish. Let's get weird. Cast your minds all the way back to pre-2010. I was like nine years old. Forget Club Penguin. Bin Weevil stocks at the top, fam. Illuminati stocks? They were at the tippy top of their peak back then. People were doing up conspiracy theories day in, day out. And to be fair, from what I saw at Wireless, Metro was trying to bring it back. Lady Gaga was doing up eccentric every single chance that she got. Shia LaBeouf wasn't a cannibal. One thing that you'll notice about all of these big high profile celebrities is that we, the gen pop peasants, had no access to them whatsoever. They wanted nothing to do with us. We essentially knew nothing about them. We didn't know what their favorite pizza toppings were. There, there was no such thing as 72 questions with GQ. Oscars, the VMAs, the Emmys, all of that. Those were some of the greatest crossover episodes known to man back in the day. Aside from, of course, Timmy Turner, ex Jimmy Neutron, Batman and the Ninja Turtles, or I, I, I don't know, Sweet Life and iCarly or whatever it was back in the day. I can't, I can't remember, man. Like, we'd see someone like Tom Cruise hanging out with Kanye West and just be like, yeah, ha, ha. Nowadays, that's just common thing. Like, it, it's, it, it's, it's normal to us now. All we knew about these A-listers was what they were preconditioned to say during these interviews with all of these big interviewers like Oprah, Oprah. Howard Stern, that pointy shouldered guy from B movie, you know what I'm saying? And truthfully, I think that's part of what made them so appealing to us back then. The mystery of it all, the fact that we didn't know anything about these people and only had our own preconceived assumption to go off. We knew that they were rich, were doing up drugs, alcohol, sex parties, all at like 11.32 in the morning on a Wednesday. So of course we were all gonna make up conspiracies about them. Beyonce has no right to be upset about it, talking about Illuminati mess, when, when she was one of the big leaders. We only saw what they allowed us to see. And that leads me on to my next section. Instagram, the popularization of Twitter, reality TV. This guy Ryan Seacrest doesn't get spoken about enough as one of the kingpins of early 2010 celebrity culture. Let me set the stage, let me paint a picture for all of you. This guy executive produced a whole shopping list worth of reality TV centered around, let me let me take a look, let me take a look. Let me, let's scroll the Wikipedia. Jamie Oliver, The Wanted, Prince Harry, Kevin Jonas, and last but not least, how could you forget? The Kardashians. You can't mention Ryan Seacrest without mentioning the Kardashians, and you can't mention the Kardashians without mentioning Ryan Seacrest. They go finger across finger, hand in hand. I can't think of another one, but they 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 are one and the same. And frankly, the Kardashians should realistically also have their own head or heads in the Mount Rushmore of celebrity pop culture in the early 2010s, if we're being real. Why do you bring up the Kardashians? I'll tell you why, random commenter. They can possibly be credited or blamed, depending on how you think about it, for this insurgence of heavily popularized celebrity interaction on social media. Nicki Minaj as well to an extent, but I'm focusing on the Kardashians here simply because no one else really allowed us into their homes 
to observe to see how they interacted with one another on such an intimate level before them don't don't come at me in the comments on some <laughs> well actually the Osborns had a show before the kardashians i was like three years old when the last episode of that thing came out i wasn't even logged in get out of my face the influence that chris jenner and her kid i'm not gonna call them her kids uh, employees the influence that they had on people who didn't even know or engage with them is absolutely insane they made a million a minute they made a million a minute never really had that much of an interest in them in my day to day but they've still had an influence on how even myself i interact with these um celebrities as well if i had a girl and she was to go through my phone and look at my dms for them to see who i'm texting it would just be me texting all of my favorite <laughs> You just messaging all of my favorite celebrities talking about some Oi, come to the UK, what are you doing? Like, this <laughs> Social media as a whole, the popularization of it has truly influenced how we interact with celebrities to the point where they didn't even feel special anymore. Like, I interact with these celebrities nowadays like they're my friends. That's Scott Mescuddy, fam. He's my bestie. We've known each other for time. We don't see them as these godly, otherworldly beings anymore. We don't see these people as the great Drake from the Hollywood Hills or from the Toronto Hills or whatever. We see him as Aubrey, everyone's favorite friendly neighborhood rapper. It's changed, the dynamic has shifted. That brings us essentially to now, the not so roaring 20s. What I've noticed, I just dropped my bottle. What I've noticed in this day and age is a sort of resurgence in that pre-2010 sort of attitude and rejection of social media by a great percentage of influential people in the media. Sort of evoking this sense to the greater public that they've got something to hide, something along those lines. I mean, like, look, how many times have you been scrolling, just scrolling Twitter, Instagram, whatever, Flickr, whatever, and you just see some rap news page talking about some SZA changed her profile picture to black and she's removed every single one of her posts from her profile. That must mean that she's entering a new era. This is what the rollout is nowadays just people being private and then coming off of private and who cares man let's be real i mean look i might be the odd one out because people still go crazy at their shows but i don't care if playboy carty took down every single post on his page artists like playboy carty the weekend in his early days frank ocean just to name a few are putting on this persona of mystery and enigma surrounding themselves and that's not to say that it's a fake persona as well because like look if you look at frank ocean in some of the other videos even back when he was in odd future this guy was just in the background just chilling so maybe that is how who he is the weekend literally had no face for the first couple of projects in his career the mysterious persona is working in this day and age. It's working. It's sort of like a breath of fresh air to these kids that don't remember what it was like pre-2010. Whole Lotta Red hit number one on the US billboard, which is insane considering the content of that album back in like Christmas 2020. It was risky, it was experimental for its genre, and this guy came out on top apparently. The Illuminati ritual, whatever he did, he came out on top. Frank Ocean, if he ever drops again, will probably break records. Look at how everyone reacted when SZA, when Kendrick came out with their albums for the first time in like whoever knows how many years. Even after that shambolic display at Coachella, which I mean, we're not gonna get into that right now. Psych! We are gonna get into it. I wanna talk about it. This guy was not only late, to his first performance in six years which by the way this whole lateness thing needs to stop it's become a weird trend as of the past couple of years and i'm sick of it. these mainstream a-list artists need to stop it i'm tired of it i know you're all watching frank i know you're watching jordan bro i know you're watching fam stop this whole lateness thing be on time this guy didn't this guy didn't even do the proper versions of some of his biggest hits which i'm getting real sick of because cuddy did the same thing chanel was a remix you can't remix chanel fam you can't just do up edm on one of your biggest songs of your entire career. And I know that Frank's guy, oh yeah, I can, I can do whatever I want. No, you can't, bro. I'm telling you. Me, a random YouTuber with 107 subscribers, talk to me nice. Bro was doing up Ice Spice karaoke in front of 43 and a half thousand people. Come on, man. He was essentially paid four mil, four million US dollars to do up karaoke with no mic for half the set. I don't blame these people for feeling scammed. I don't blame these people for walking out in their masses on some kind of like exodus migration. This might be the one that gets me in trouble, but I'm gonna air it out anyways. This is the airing cup, but this is my show. This guy has to be Nigerian because there's no way, there's no other way he can get away with this amount of scamming. Like it was cute when he did the whole blonde slash endless Def Jam thing for 30 mil or whatever the video says on YouTube that keeps on showing up on my recommended that I refuse to watch but doing it to your fans who 
for some of them begged their parents to let them go to Coachella. Like, come on, man. You need to do better. Anyways, back to the point. And another one of my issues with this whole mysterious artist thing is, as I said at the start, we're seeing artists who don't even have the audience for it doing it. My friend, you have three songs on Spotify, all of which have less than a thousand plays. Why are you disappearing for six months at a time? You're expecting to blow up. You're expecting to blow up. You're not doing a hint of marketing. You're not even doing a hint of social media presence. You just drop your songs and disappear and expect people to- My friend, you better be dropping symphonies in order to expect such a thing. Because in this world we live in, that's not how it works. You will retire at 74 years old after a nice long 50 year career serving tables at Nando's. I'm playing, I'm playing. That's an, that's just, that's, that's an exaggeration. If anything, they'll probably retire at 80 considering the UK, uh, never mind. But yeah, literally look at this guy Destroy Lonely and Ken Carson, the whole like opium thing, homicide gang as well. These people just be disappearing. Look at the way Playboy Carti treated Nardwa. I, uh, to be fair, I'll get into that in my next section actually. Salt are one of my favourite artists of this past decade. They started dropping music in early 2019 and they are famous for their mystery. The reason why they are an exception to me is because that's the vibe they came with at the beginning. This guy Cardi was doing up SoundCloud, dropping mixtapes and all of that beforehand. So was Lil Yorty, so were all of these other artists. But it's like as soon as they break the surface, they decide they want to become reclusive and not talk to anyone and be like, oh, I don't call my phone, da 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 da. You're acting as if we all have dementia now. Salt didn't start off as some high profile artists all out on social media like Cardi B or whatever and then one day decide to remove themselves from the limelight. I get that some artists are natural introverts and they have to put on this persona of being an extrovert and hey guys da, 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 da. Like, I get it in order to break the surface and that's understandable but that doesn't mean they need to leave us with literally nothing. Salt have never done an interview they've never even dropped a music video they've never even confirmed their members I mean we uh, there's speculations going on and let's be real some of these speculations are most likely the case. My point is this group is so mysterious and all of that but they've left us with some classics that we are going to appreciate and remember for decades to come. The quality most definitely matches their levels of exposure to the media and how they treat everyone. And to be fair, I can kind of understand another reason as well. Another reason behind the whole thing could just simply be the level of surveillance you receive once you hit a certain level of fame. Especially, like I said before, with that little nigga Nardwa running around doing a few days late. Like, low key, it makes sense why he dug that guy a rolling loud. I'm not trying to get my pa's baby mums dug up like it's some kind of uh, <laughs> like it's some kind of child support meeting or whatever. No, thank you. And what annoyed me was that this guy had the entirety of Twitter defending him like he was the weird disabled kid in class or something. This man is in his mid 50s fam, he's old enough to be everyone's dad. And don't get me wrong, I'm not defending or bootlicking or whatever. This guy Carti, from what I've seen and observed, does not give me the implications that he's a good person. You have to observe your surroundings and read the room fam. Why would you go to a man known for keeping himself out of the public eye expecting him to chat to you? And to all of the Twitter fingered people who are probably gonna come from me if this ever goes viral. Why would you defend someone putting themselves in the way of harm for such a stupid reason? It doesn't make sense to me. Look at one of the recent episodes of Black Mirror fam. That episode which by the way was one of the top episodes of Black Mirror that I've ever seen. I don't care what anyone else says. That one was sick. Myself and Steve in the podcast the other day because I know you guys watched it actually had a bit of a chat about it. Like being that famous probably wouldn't be too fun. Just look at Kim and Kanye man. Look at how sad they look in this picture. Even in some of your most vulnerable moments you'll have some nigga with a camera like 25 meters away in their own car sniping it at you like there's some kind of like they're on some kind of mission in Afghanistan or whatever trying to get premium prices from TMZ. If I was him I'd have damn near lost my mind as well. Forget the fact that I'm losing a baddie which by the way will make you turn into the worst version of yourself but the fact that it was such a high profile case is insane to me. This guy was on stage talking about some, I nearly killed my daughter. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. At that point, what can you do? Except go on the stage and cry in front of hundreds of people. Even artists like Jay Paul, 
D'Angelo, Miss Lauren Hill have their own reasons for leaving the spotlight. This guy Jay Paul had an album leaked to the masses before he'd even had the chance to properly finish it. That's the kind of thing that will make someone turn into a supervillain. Sometimes though I can't lie, I do have to take the sides of the leakers. Not necessarily in Jay Paul's pet case, that was a tragedy, but if you are one of the biggest artists in the world or up there with some of the biggest artists in the world and you want to do up Mr. Mysterious especially in this day and age of the technology and everything, don't play dumb and be your oh, is me. I don't know. when you leave your fans with nothing for years on end. Find some balance. Don't overdo the exposure but at the same time don't underdo it as well. I'm gonna use Kanye as an example again because he's just a brilliant case study for everything apparently. That man only knows how to either underdo or overdo his exposure to the general public. Never the middle ground. But that guy will over explain himself into the tightest corner possible with seemingly no way back into the real world. Or he'll say something and do something so extravagantly out of pocket and then just refuse to explain. Like it doesn't make sense. And he'll just refuse to elaborate, leaving everyone confused and pissed off at the same time. You get people like Sia who were essentially so high in the public eye and then randomly decided to disappear, but her reasons were legitimate. She nearly had her nudes leaked and then she decided to leak them herself like a boss. And then you get people like Prince Harry as well, who, whose mother literally died because of the crazy surveillance that people in the media put on high profile celebrities. It's understandable sometimes. To the people putting on the fake persona of being mysterious, grow up. I'm sick of it. So to conclude this video, I honestly, I just wanted to chat to you all a little bit about some of my observations. I actually came up with the idea for this video while I was fighting for my life in that crowd at Wireless. I've never known dehydration like it. I'll leave you with this one quote. If you choose to put someone on a pedestal, they'll have no choice but to look down on you. Thank you all for watching this episode of Airing Cupboard. Make sure you all like, subscribe, tickle all those buttons below the video apart from the thumbs down, comment some other stuff you've observed as well. This is a discussion page. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Keep it real and I will see you later. Alligators.